Good afternoon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to day three of Lifelong Learning Week brought to you by Career Map. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, who haven't seen me around yet, my name is Heather Reynolds. I'm the account director at Career Map, and this afternoon I'm joined by the team at Arden University. Um, so today with us we've got Loretta, who is the process and continuous improvement manager, Caroline, who's the head of careers and employability. Jack, who is the senior student recruitment advisor, Molly, who's marketing executive, and Laura, who is a Arden student currently studying a, a bachelor's in criminology and psychology. So the team will be talking you all through um, everything Arden. So from the courses that they offer, the application process, student support, and your future prospects and employability. Um, and Laura is specifically here to tell you her story. So she'll be telling you kind of what brought her to Arden and her experiences and her plans for the future. So feel free to ask any questions to any of the team in the chat box. Uh, we will do our best to get them all answered. Um, the session is being recorded, so it will be available on demand and we will also be emailing the link to everybody who has registered. So um, it will be able to be referred to in the future. However, if you want to screenshot anything, go ahead and do so. But I think this is my cue to um, nip away and uh, hand over to the team and I will um, I'll see you for any questions. OK. Thanks, Heather. Hi, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us um, this lunchtime. Uh, we hope you find this session really useful as we talk through all of the different things um, Arden, Arden University. Um, so I'm going to kick us off today. So I'm Molly. Um, as Heather said, I'm one of the marketing executives for Arden. Um, so I look after our student communications, um, look after some of our webinars like this one um, and our graduation and some of the project launches when we launch new products or services to our students as well. Um, so thanks again for joining us. It's really nice to have you all here today. Um, so just as a very, very quick overview of, of what Arden is. Um, so one of our key sort of values is that we believe everyone everywhere has a right to higher education. Um, it's, it's got both personal and professional benefits um, and we want to help people get there, um, especially people that might feel like they've got a barrier. Um, so things like geographical constraints. So we are an international university. We have students all over the world that study with us. Um, financial concerns. So we have um, student loans company that can support you with your studies um, through sort of the government. Or we have really simple and easy payment plans as well to help people who've got concerns around the finances. Uh, people who've got family commitments. So the way that we um, sort of teach and that you learn, um, Loretta will touch on a little bit more when it when it comes to her. Um, but it, it makes study really flexible for you. So you can study around your schedule and around your time. Um, and you can study part time or full time. You can study um, solely online or in one of our study centres around the UK. Um, so again, Loretta will touch on this a little bit more um, when I hand over to her in just a moment. Um, but yeah, it makes it really, really easy and accessible for you to continue your education to further um, your own personal studies or your career. Um, we've just got some stats on the bottom there as well. Um, so 95% of our graduates have said that they were satisfied with their learning experience with us. And 90% have also said that their career possibilities have been enhanced by studying with us as well. So that was taken from our graduate survey of 2020. Um, so we'll hopefully have those stats updated um, as our students graduate in two weeks time um, as part of our 2021 cohort. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to Loretta um, who will introduce herself to you very quickly and talk a little bit more um, in detail about, about what your experience will be like with us. Um, over to you Loretta, thank you. Thank you Molly. Hi everyone, I am Loretta. Um, I am the Process and Continuous Improvement Manager. I've been with Arden for four years um, within the student services team. So my role is really focusing on our student feedback and how we can drive student feedback to further improve and enhance your student experience with us. So I'm just gonna go over a few slides today um, and I will kick off with Arden post-pandemic. So we know that the decision to undertake a postgraduate decision uh, study with us um, for any student is a major one. 
After years of studying a bachelor's degree, many students take some time away from their studies to concentrate on their careers and their progression within their careers. The difficult post-COVID-19 jobs market is a huge challenge for students graduating this year. And it's very different from the one students and the one that we had anticipated for. Many of our graduates look at how they can stand out and they can distinguish themselves um, from any other job applicants. Um, and whether or not that is you applying for a brand new role or you're currently employed and you wish to further progress within the current job role that you, you have. Once you complete your master's degree with us, you will typically have one of two titles. So a master of arts or a master of science. And it is a mark of distinction in a really crowded job market. But students should do as much research as possible before you make their choice. And we'll go over that a little bit more. And by all means, you can look at it on our website as well. We have recently established a career service, which is on hand to offer expert advice and guidance tailored to your circumstances and your aspirations. We currently offer a fully funded online master's degree for all of our Arden University students who graduate with an undergraduate degree. This initiative was launched um, to support our students impacted by the pandemic and in turn renegotiating in a really difficult post COVID-19 jobs market. This offer means that Arden students who are currently studying with us and go on to successfully um, to attain a Arden undergraduate degree with us will pay no tuition fees once they've successfully completed their bachelor studies with us. For you to be eligible for this, you must successfully complete 240 credits of your eligible undergraduate program um, to a level of a 2-2 classification or higher. There will, of course, be other entry requirements for your chosen eligible postgraduate program, which you can find on our website. And to enroll onto this postgraduate program, um, you will need to commence these within five years from the point of when you graduate and you attain that undergraduate degree with us. So I'm just going to go through a little bit now in terms of teaching and learning at Arden. So how we teach. So we do things slightly differently here at Arden and we like to let students take control of their degree choices. So similar to um, what Molly mentioned in the introduction, we are unlike any other traditional university and we are flexible, offering you the choice to study around your life, whether that's going to be a fully online degree or in one of our study centres. And the core of your learning will take place on our bespoke digital platform, iLearn. iLearn is an incredible learning platform which we currently have and it houses all of your uh, materials which are set out by your academic teams. You've got the ability on there to also um, be part of the Arden community and via our discussion forums you can speak to other students that are um, on your program. Um, via the discussion forum you can have conversations about the degree that you're currently on, um, your interests, your aspirations and really connect with the wider community at Arden. If you're studying online there will be no lectures for you to attend on site anywhere. You will not be fixed to a timetable so it will be flexible around your life, your commitments, and your study portal is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Regardless of the way that you choose to study, the qualification that you will gain at the end of your course is the same as any other UK university. And we provide you with all the online study materials you'll need, include access to a team of expert tutors and plenty of support from the moment you enroll with us all the way up to graduation. So how will you learn? At Arden, you are in charge of your learning. And just because we are a digital university doesn't mean you will be online on, on your own. So like I mentioned, via iLearn, you'll have the ability to engage with the wider community of students. Um, you'll be able to make connections with students, your student representative networks, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, but you won't be studying on your own. As I mentioned, you'll have that support from the moment you roll all the way up to graduation. Um, you'll have support from your academic teams who are expert tutors in their fields who will hold regular seminars and you can also drop them an email with any specific questions you might have along the way. Throughout your course, you'll have a dedicated student success coach who will initially reach out to you when you first enroll with Arden to introduce themselves and let you know that they're on hand to offer you support and you can book in one-to-one -one sessions with your student success coach. 
You'll also have access to academic skill tutors who you can email if you need any help with any of your studies along the way. You will learn dynamically, benefiting from a range of formative and summative assessments at a regular interval, so you're constantly provided with guidance you need to develop. All of our programmes have got a student representative network, which is a community of ardent students who really drive your feedback forward to committee meetings, to myself, to our student voice officer. And we've recently launched a brand new student association so that student, that student voice is embedded in everything we do. As part of that student association, we have just recruited um, an ex-student of ours. I don't want to say ex because he's actually just taken some time out of his current postgraduate degree with us, who is a full-time member of Arden as our student association president. So he's going to be on hand really leading the student representative forward. And he's going to be working alongside all of our rep networks and we'll have time to meet all of our students. We've got Unity, which is our student engagement platform, and that currently sits within iLearn. So again, it's another tool that you can use to really feel like you're part of the wider community. Our UK study centres. So we currently have six study centres in the UK, and we offer a range of postgraduate and undergraduate and foundation programmes. Um, we've got blended learning, which is the best of both worlds. So you've got the ability to come into the study centre and you'll have um, maybe one or two sessions a week based on the course that you're currently doing. And there's no additional commitments to attend um, seminars every single day. So really, we fit around your life. We know it's hard to return to studies especially when we've got commitments and life happens all around you. Um, making that step to, to, to take a degree is extraordinary commitment at any level. Um, and juggling everything around you can seem quite daunting, but you don't need to press pause to earn your qualification. It's really important to accept that studying your postgraduate degree will have an impact on your family. But with the right blend of time management and support, you can ensure that positives outweigh the negatives. And alongside the support that we mentioned in terms of our success coaches, our academic skills tutors, there are there is so much support around how your family can support you whilst you're studying with us too. So we've created guides, sessions that can really talk about how your family can support you whilst you're studying and you're taking that really exciting next level, next challenge. We oh. Sorry, Heather, I think you're on mute. <laughs> I am as well, sorry. No worries. Um, can I interject with a couple of questions? Of course. Just while we're on the subject. Um, so I've got a question just about how um, this is different to the Open University. Um, and I've got an, another one around, um, there's somebody here that's applied to universities in Nottingham, but how will a course with Arden benefit them differently? So I think we can kind of, bundle those kind mm -hmm. of questions together in terms of the USP or, or the point of studying with Arden outside of other universities? Of course. Um, so like I mes mentioned, you know, the course and the programme that you'll do will be similar to any other course at any other university. But the difference is, is the support. And that is what we really value at Arden is the support that we offer our students from the point that they're enrolled. And it comes from all avenues. So you've got it from our student services team who will be on hand to support you along the way. And we'll do regular outreach activities to check in and see how you're getting along. Um, we have got dedicated academic skills tutors who you can have one to one sessions and do some really refreshing skills around um, academic writing academic integrity. So there's so much support that goes into your whole student experience. So it's, and that's what we pride ourselves in is the support that you're going to receive throughout your student experience. You're not going to be logging in, going to a seminar and submitting an assignment. And I think that is what really um, distinguishes us compared to other universities. Brilliant, that's so helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just to just to end on this in terms of the support as well, um, our student success coaches also run and hold regular resilience and time management workshops 
so students can learn skills from uh, for life um, and we'll make sure that you are setting realistic goals and sticking to them. So student support. Now, having been in student support for the last four years, I might be slightly biased to my own team. So <laughs> we really do pride ourselves on the support that we offer students, similar to what I said before. Um, we've got such a great foundation of support built in around us. Um, the, and we believe that it's a, it's a real key to success with us. Um, so we'll be on hand to offer any support or guidance throughout your studies. Um, even though you may be a postgraduate level student um, with previous experience of studying, we don't want to assume that you'll just hit the ground running and we'll offer you the same level of support that we would offer any other students and make sure that we tailor the advice to the, and recognize the level of study that you're currently on. In addition to this, you'll receive standard support, um, financial support um, and general advice. Um, recently, we've gone through a reshaping of our existing student services team where we've been able to branch off into um, departments. So you'll have an inclusion team who will be on hand to support you with any um, concerns you might have around a specific learning um, difficulty. They will be on hand to offer you any support around reasonable adjustments. We've got our success coaches who will do all of your outreach activities and we'll do regular touch points with you to see how you're getting on with your program. And then we've got our student support champions who are our first line defense team to answer your calls, to answer your queries and your emails. We know that some of our graduate postgraduate students may not have been in education for some time. And we believe that as long, alongside this is that we have created a, a series of workshops that run throughout the year. They are free to all of our students and they're really, really valuable. So if you've been out of education for some time since you last did your undergraduate degree and you wanted a refresher course in referencing, paraphrasing, these are the types of workshops that we put on all year round for our students. So if you do enroll with us, these will be on your island. You can sign up, register and attend these as often as you as you would like to. So that's it from me, unless there are any questions and I'm gonna hand you over to Caroline. Um, there are a couple of questions um, I think that I could probably chip in with now. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a question here, would we be sent materials or is it 100% online? It is 100% online. So all your learning materials will be on your island. So um, you'll have a module released to you and all of your lessons and learning materials will be on your island from the moment you open up your module. So although you'll be going through your weeks of study with us, you'll have access to the materials from day one. And from day one, you'll also have access to your um, assignment question. Island also houses our library. So you don't have to go to a physical library or purchase a book because all of that material is within Island. So you've got access to a 24 hour online library and articles that you can look into as well. Invest in a printer then I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of subject specific questions. Um, do you offer nursing courses and do you offer mental health courses? I might park that for Jack in terms of courses. I, I yeah. don't think we offer anything in terms of nurses, nursing courses, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, and in terms of mental health, I think that would fall into um, possibly a psychology degree with us. Yeah. OK. No, that's when to be honest with you, I can imagine that a few of these questions might be um, kind of delved into more detail as we Definitely. go on. But I will just ask you to just um, touch on a couple of these now. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually quite sure that Caroline will will talk in more detail about this. Does the university have links to employers to help students get jobs when they graduate? Um, yeah. And what kind of career support do Arden offer? So is that my cue to just let you go now? <laughs> Please do, yes. <laughs> right, take it away. So great to see so many of you online today. It's great to talk to you. My name's Caroline. I'm Head of Careers and Employability at Arden University. 
great to see you here today. Um, we have a small team that's help, here to help you wherever you are uh, in your career. And we recognize that lots of people come to Arden with professional experience are looking to develop or enhance their career or start something brand new. So we're here to support you whatever stage you are. And I think we're quite different to that in some universities who, who look at kind of graduates as you know, straight out of university and going through, we recognize people join Arden to get qualifications to take you to different places. So we're a small but powerful team here to really help you wherever you are in your career. So in terms of career support, what do we do? Well, first thing I would say is that career support comes from our team, but also across the organization. Your academic teams, we work closely with them, so they will help you with thinking about your employability skills throughout your studies at Arden. And everyone throughout the organization is keen to make sure that you know you talk about your career and we'll move helping you to move forward, whoever you speak to. We will be running, um, we run employer talks and careers fairs. So there are lots of online events where people do, where people can uh, speak to employers and reach out and get advice. We also have a guest speaker series that runs through the academic programs. So lots of opportunities to talk to employers, reach out to people and find out more about new opportunities that you hadn't really considered before. You can get personalized advice from, through my team. We offer online workshops and drop-ins. Um, through our experienced careers consultancy. team. So whatever you're thinking about, if you have a question, we're here to help. And we also provide advice via email. So even if you can't get to a live session, there's people you can ask. And if you can't get to a live session and want to access the recording, you can. We're here to really think about you, you know, regardless of what you've got going on in your life, we're here to support. And if you do want to check in and look at careers results at 11 o'clock at night or eight o'clock in the morning, you can do that via our career portal, which is available 24 seven. So there's lots of information on there, whether you're at the start of your career journey, looking to career change or develop your career through further study, we're here to help. The other really valuable thing about the Arden qualifications is that they are professionally recognized. So, we have links with a number of professional bodies, as you can see in front of you, who are accrediting our degrees. So that you know the quality of the degree that you get from Arden is supported by the professional bodies involved. But also there's great resources and networks that you can tap into through these professional bodies. And again, meet employers, reach out and start to build those networks that will help you to get uh, your job at the end of it. So we have links through our professional bodies, through our lecturers and also kind of through the jobs and, uh, and placements that we advertise um, on our own sites. So thinking about progression opportunities, if you are in the process of thinking, do I do another degree to help myself progress? And I know this from personal experience, I recently completed my own master's on, through an online course. It, when you're thinking about it, it is about thinking about that. How is it going to help me? And that might be about increasing your specialist knowledge, it might be about opening up new opportunities. It might be about increasing the level of responsibilities that you can do. So how can you move up through that progression and, and get promotion quicker through the process? And it really is about building those transferable ski, skills. So whatever you decide to do off the back of it, there are opportunities to develop your skills to take to, to new roles. So it's a really great opportunity to do that. And as you can see in front of you here, we've talked about some of the transferable skills that you can get from your degree, but also there's tr tremendous sense of satisfaction when you get to the end of it. You might be changing direction. If you decide, if you're at the point where you're thinking, do I need a new challenge? Is this right for me? Yes, echoing what's been said earlier, it can be a bit daunting, but that's where Arden as an organization can really help you to support you to get through it. And also as, as a careers team, we're very much recognizing that people are going to be lifelong learning and changing direction through their course. And so we're here to help you think about how you can pivot your experience with your degree to look at new markets and how do you position yourself and make sure you are applicant ready for those roles. So they do, some courses will provide you that academic gateway to new specialisms, but also upskilling will help you to kind of move up the career ladder, take advantage of new industry sectors and developments. Things you might not have thought about, you know, 10 years ago, there are new jobs coming up all the time that you never know, uh, never knew existed. And so we're, we're keen to make sure you are ready for the, the opportunities today and for tomorrow. Okay, 
that's my bit about careers. I'm very happy to take any questions at the end if you want to, or any questions now, if anyone has any questions. If not, I will hand over. I would say hand over because um, I think that that was so comprehensive <laughs> that we've not had anything pop through just yet. But what I will be doing is just giving, um, kind of putting some overarching questions to the team at the end, um, which would be helpful if you could chip in then. But yeah, I'd say a hand over to you, Jack. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that, Caroline. Um, so my name is Jack. I'm a senior student recruitment advisor um, here at Arden University. Um, so I'm going to be talking through the application process and the entry requirements for our programmes. Um, so just to start off really with sort of displaying our portfolio of programmes, starting with our undergraduate courses. Um, so I'll just leave this slide on here. Uh, for a minute or so, just so you can have a look at some of the, um, well, at all of our undergraduate programmes here. Um, I know there's a question about nursing. Uh, we do get questions about that uh, programme quite a lot. Unfortunately, we don't actually run any nursing degrees at the moment. Uh, but what you'll see on the left hand side um, is we do have a lot of uh, business and business management focused courses um, and then on the right hand side we've got uh, courses more to do with social sciences and then at the bottom um, we have our degrees that also include a foundation year um, and I'll talk a little bit about that um, in a few slides as well. Um, it's important to note that with our undergraduate courses um, all of them are available 100% online but only some of them are available um, at our study centres. So all of these courses that you see here uh, will be available online, but not all of them will be available um, at our study centres. Um, so just going through now to our postgraduate programmes. Um, so here's a list of our postgraduate programmes that we do offer. Um, again, with sort of the mode of study, all of these are only available 100% online. We don't currently run our postgraduate programs at any of our study centres. So if you were looking at um, studying, you know, your master's degree with us, it would be studied 100% online. So I'll just leave this here um, for a minute or so, so you can have a look at our postgraduate programs. If I can just chip in with a, um, a couple of questions here. Mm -hmm. um, so is there a limit of places um, to, to each course? I mean, I suppose considering it's online, is there a cutoff or not? So for our online courses, um, no, there's no sort of cap on the amount of students that we can have on the courses. Um, but for our blended learning, so our courses that are run in the study centres, uh, there would be a cap on those. Um, but it is different for different um, subjects. Um, so it would always be something to, to inquire about at the time. Um, but really, uh, you know, we do, that's why we do try and get through the application process quite quickly to, to make sure that applicants have got their offer and their place secured. Brilliant. Um, do you have to be from the UK to study with you? Um, so for our distance learning degrees, for our online degrees, uh, you can study anywhere in the world. Um, so I think um, one of my colleagues did touch on that earlier, just in terms of it being, you know, sort of irrespective of geographical location, the online programs can be studied as long as you, you know, essentially have a laptop and an internet connection. Um, our, you know, our blended learning, so our study centre programs are um, mainly for, for UK students. Right. OK, lovely. Um, and I suppose this is going to be a diff difficult question, depending on the kind of course that people are going for. But if we just refer to, um, say, undergrad and postgrad, I suppose, how can somebody ensure that they do get a place? Um, so um, traditionally with a postgraduate degree, there's they have to have a, a particular background. Is that correct? Is it still the same um, with you with you guys? Or and and yeah, what what's the kind of what attributes does somebody have to have to to get you know an opportunity to study with you? Yeah, so I'm going to talk about the entry requirements um, in a couple of slides time. Um, so a lot of it is going to you know we have standard entry requirements which are going to be based on qualifications um and if students don't have qualifications i'll talk about that in in a, in a minute uh, about sort of what we look for if a student doesn't have any qualifications 
brilliant. Um, and I don't know whether um, a member of the team will be able to, to touch on this later when we talk about um, student support. Um, but we've got a, a question around the diversity of um, the support team. So in terms of the backgrounds of tutors and support members, um, do, do these consist of kind of a true reflection of, um, you know, it, it, well, ethnic minorities and, and the kind of social population? Probably a question to ask for, I think, Caroline potentially. I would say that we have a pretty good reflection, uh, ethnicity, diversity within our lecturing group, uh, lecturers. I've met a handful of them on, on site at both our Tower Hill and Ealing campuses in the last couple of weeks. And we have quite a diversity through there. Uh, Loretta, I don't know if you can comment on the student services, the student support side of things. Yes, um, just, yeah, similar to what Caroline said, a real diverse um, uh, group of uh, student services members, um, which do reflect um, our student body, I would say. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And I will I'll leave you to continue all chipping with any questions towards the end of this section. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so just uh, moving on now for, to the entry requirements and then the application process. Um, so starting off here just with our undergraduate entry requirements, um, what we would usually be looking for is two A-level passes as well as three GCSE passes. Um, so this can also be any overseas equivalent or any UK equivalent as well. Um, so, for example, you know, you may not have done GCSEs and A-levels at school, uh, but you may have done college qualifications since or qualifications through your employer. Um, so anything at sort of level two and level three or above is, is what we would be looking for for standard entry requirements. Um, we can also consider work experience as well. So this would be assessed on a case by case basis. Um, and it is something that we would look at um, if, you know, if students didn't have any qualifications or, or had some qualifications but didn't quite meet standard entry, we could sometimes use work experience to bridge that gap. Um, so, you know, suitable work experience, you know, essentially showing transferable skills to study at degree level. So it might be something, you know, working with data, report writing, managing teams or people, um, you know, different things like that. Um, you know, if you weren't eligible for our undergraduate degrees, uh, we, like I mentioned in, in the undergraduate portfolio, we do also offer some of our degrees with foundation years. Um, so for this, what we'd be looking for is essentially just the GCSE requirements. So three GCSEs um, at grade C or above, um, again, or an equivalent qualification to that. Um, and, and we can sometimes use work experience instead for the foundation year entry. Essentially what that does um, is it takes your sort of undergraduate degree from being a minimum of three years to a minimum of four years because it has that foundation year in front of it. Um, and then just looking finally at our postgraduate requirements. Um, so to get onto one of our postgraduate programmes, you'd be looking at having a UK honours degree um, at classification 2, 2 or above, um, again, or an overseas equivalent. So an overseas degree um, that is equivalent to a UK honours degree. Um, again, if you didn't have this, we would be able to look at using work experience. However, uh, we'd be looking for five years plus and it, and it would need to be at sort of managerial um, level to be able to go straight onto a master's degree without having an undergraduate degree already. Um, is there a, a link that I could just pop in the chat or could someone just do it at some point which would just um, take... Um, the guys here who are, who are listening today just to your um, the course pages where people can see the different re requirements for for each course I've just got a question here regarding um, health course but it, it's quite specific so I think if we could just start a signpost people to the area of the website where people can kind of have a dig about and, and find out the answers to more specific course questions that will be quite helpful um, if someone could just pop it in at some point throughout the um throughout the chat that would be really good 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, if somebody could put that in, um, that'd be great. I mean, you'd be able to look on our website for the overview of all of our programs. And then when you go into the specific course pages, um, you know, it would mention the entry requirements in there as well. Um, so you can have a look at, at each of the course pages on our website. Brilliant. I'm just going to pop that your your homepage. Yeah, OK, perfect. Um, so just looking at the application process here, just so um, just to sort of to run through that quickly for you now. Um, I mean, you know, obviously, once you've had a look at our programs online, if there is a program that you're interested in um, on the specific course page, you can either inquire about that program or you can actually put in an application. So the first stage would be to put in an application on our website um, It probably takes about five to ten minutes of your time and you would be assigned um, a member of the student recruitment team. Um, so myself or, or one of my colleagues um, and uh, we would be in contact with you via telephone to talk you through uh, your application um, essentially to make sure the course is a right fit for you to answer any in-depth questions you might have about the program uh, any information that you couldn't necessarily get from the website uh, you know talk about that in a little bit more detail um, and essentially talk through how we can get you an offer on the program and the next steps um to 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 move that forward um so in terms of actually being able to get you an offer on the program um it'd be talking through what documents we would need from your side to actually complete your application so um you know going back to the entry requirements for the program if that was going to be done through qualifications we would need to see the certificates for those to be able to use them um equally if we were going to use work experience instead we would be looking for a up-to-date cv and then a reference um from your employer that, that matches that cv and covers that work experience for us um once we've got all of the documentation um we would send the application to be processed by the team it usually takes around sort of three working days then to receive that decision um and and you know hopefully get your offer on the program um you know whilst we're waiting for that we'd be able to advise uh, things like funding so whether you're looking to get a student loan or self-funding the degree um, it's something that we would be able to talk you through as well and, and help you with that um, and then if you were successful on the program um, successful with your application um, your offer will be sent via our admissions team uh, through an email to you um, and that would include the next steps in terms of how to actually accept your offer and then how to enroll onto the program um, so that's it from me for now, um, unless there are any questions about anything that's spoken about. I just, yeah, I've just got one question. It's pretty simple. Um, what are the intake dates? Yep. Yeah, so for um, distance learning, we do run four intakes at the moment. So for our online programmes, uh, we have start dates in January, April, July and October. Um, so the next start date is going to be towards the end of January for that. Um, for our study centre and blended learning uh, start dates, they do run slightly differently. Uh, but again, we will have a start date coming up at the beginning of February for that. Um, and then we would have uh, multiple start dates throughout the year. So we usually run four intakes per year. Brilliant. That's super helpful. Thank you. OK, so I'm just going to pass over to Laura now, um, who is a student uh, currently studying with us. So hopefully she'll be able to share some of her experiences um, studying with Arden. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura. Um, so I've been with Arden for this year. Um, I'm a single mum to a five year old whirlwind, shall I call her? Um, I, I left school with no qualifications um could do it just didn't want to do it <laughs> was a difficult child um i then kind of got married and had some children <laughs> i say some i spent the next 25 years which oh sounds such a long time being a care assistant which i absolutely loved um i loved my job i was happy to do that job forever at that point um Unfortunately, I then became quite unwell. Um, I have a neurological condition now that um, I, I have now for life, that's it. Um, 
so that becomes quite difficult sometimes just in itself and being a mum um kind of felt sorry for myself for a little while as you do and uh, then kind of pulled my socks up and thought right okay this is it it's just me and my little girl at the time my older two had gone off they'd gone to college and university so it's just me and my youngest and uh i thought okay i need to do something now um I did do some courses with another online university and um, loved it, got on very well to a point. Um, kind of got to the point again where I kind of stopped and started for a little bit. And then I kind of thought once she actually started school, OK, let's knuckle down and, and let's get something going again. I quite like I quite enjoy learning. So once I figure out what it is I want to do, then, you know, I was I was going to go ahead with it. Um, I'm doing my I'm doing my degree full time, which even now makes me laugh because I just think that's crazy. Why am I doing it full time? <laughs> um, it is hard work. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, I'm juggling my whirlwind. I'm juggling an illness and, you know, trying to get good grades at the same time. Um, and it can be difficult sometimes, it can. However, um, in particular, uh, a couple of months ago now, um, I ended up in the hospital again for another surgery and um, I got put behind and um, I was absolutely beside myself because I had two modules at that time that I needed doing. And um, had obviously bitten off far more than I could chew, was panicking. And the best thing about it was one small email that I sent to my tutor. And um, he was fantastic. Um, I had a phone call with him, had a nice chat. And I kind of realized to myself, actually, I'm putting far too much pressure on myself. Um, so I decided to defer. Um, and it was, without a doubt, the best choice that I made for me. Um, at the time, I was incredibly disappointed in myself and thought, you know, I've, what have I done? I've totally ruined it. <laughs> now, <laughs> I can kind of see from the other side of the tracks. And I can see now that when I put in my assignment, it's going to be spot on. If I had done that at the time, whilst juggling hospitals and surgeries and whatever <laughs> it would have been half-hearted um and that just kind of sums up for me personally this is obviously just my opinion um the support that i've had throughout the whole thing um from from even just applying um I've, sean i remember her name because it's, it's stuck there now people that that give you support in life always always stick in your mind and um even Sean, when i first applied and i was panicking thinking how am i going to manage this is it really the right choice should i do it um she was fantastic and the amount of emails i sent her the poor girl i mean constant but what about this but what if this happens what if that happens and she very very oh, just such a kind girl and she put my mind at rest to the point where I got off the last conversation with her and I thought, do you know what, just stop, leave the poor girl alone. <laughs> she cannot do any more for you. <laughs> and um, I applied and it, the whole application was just so easy and simple and actually very quick. Um, so I've had the support from them. I've had the support obviously from Kieran in particular, but I get support from all the tutors. They've been fantastic. Um, the other part of support that I have to mention, um, is the, um, the wellbeing portal. So as, um, as a student, you get different portals, like Caroline said earlier, you have the career portal, so you can kind of look at where you're going. Um, you also have the wellbeing portal, which is fantastic for, for mental health. Um, you know, we've all suffered particularly in the last couple of years, it's been very difficult for everybody. Um, and the support all around Arden um, has been second to none. I, I have a, a nice insight of, 
of seeing from different points of view. Um, I've been well in my life and now I'm classed as disabled and um, I've also kind of gone through the whole studying when my children were grown up and now I'm studying with a young family and I can kind of see from each point everybody has barriers in life whether it's family you know whether it's single parent whether it's work you trying to you know juggle a, a full-time job as well as study um I, I have had that insight and they all have their own pros and cons um however i would say if if you have the support at home and if you actually reach out to arden for the support then you're you're on a good start straight away you're on a good start um it has been by far the best decision i've ever made personally in my life so um i will take this opportunity to say thank you to arden but there you go thank you brilliant that was brilliant laura thank you um i do have some questions around um your personal experience if, if that's okay um so um first of all there's a question around whether you're able to apply for any, any funding and i suppose this is really different for for everybody as an individual uh but um yeah what what funding is available if any and i don't know whether any of the the team can jump in on this if it helps personally i do know of the um I, I can't remember the actual name maybe somebody else can can chip in um there is a disabled students grant that you can get to help you with anything that you may need to help make your study more simple whether it's you know software or anything like that um i personally because it's a neurological condition find it quite hard sometimes to stare at the screen so i actually have you know things that help me they it reads the book to me or reads the page to me and it's all very clever <laughs> and i never would have known about it if it hadn't been for arden <laughs> brilliant thank you could i just add to that we have a great inclusion team who are there to support so our inclusion team are there to help anyone who who thinks they might need some additional support with a with a learning difficulty or other things uh, and they're here to, to help you kind of work through those things. Brilliant. Thanks, Caroline. And I just wanted to add that um, in November, so towards the end of this month, we will be launching a financial support bursary for students. So um, we've noticed that in particular during the pandemic, um, where students were studying from home, they were having to share laptops with family members and children. Um, so we've got two different financial support bursaries that students can apply for. So it'll be to support with um, unforeseen circumstances um, and you can apply for a living cost support or you can apply for um, a digital poverty support which will be a laptop which we will give to students to support their studies so that's going to be launched from November and it's just um, another thing that we are reinvesting back into our students so the fees um, that you are paying us we're reinvesting that back into our student body that's amazing thank you that's really helpful um Laura back to you and again it's it's one that's quite personal to you what tools do you use to to allow you to commit to your study um or what tips do you have uh, for somebody who has a family and obviously lots of different distractions and responsibilities um yeah what what yeah. would you recommend <laughs> I think the main thing the main thing for me that really really helped um and it's so simple and it sounds very silly but it was to have a schedule and even though you may not stick to the schedule it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if at 10 a.m you're meant to be doing this or tomorrow morning you're meant to do this um i wake up most mornings and i don't know how i'm going to be um i actually spent pretty much all of last week in my bed um i was very unwell but that's okay because you kind of put it's a schedule it's it's not set in stone <laughs> yeah you, know, you can work around it okay you may have had commitments for for two days and you haven't been able to get online you haven't been able to do any work but that's okay because on the third day you might be able to add in an extra hour and i think the key is to to have it written down have a plan but don't panic about sticking to it yeah you know, 
life gets in the way <laughs> just that awareness and so I think a lot Absolutely. of the time just seeing having thoughts on paper actually halves halves the stress doesn't it That's absolutely half, yeah most of the time whatever the problem is um okay then um a couple more questions for you laura and then i've got a, a, a small amount of generic ones for the rest of the team mm -hmm. um there's somebody here it's over um it's years since i last studied um so what advice would you give me to to take the plunge <laughs> um yeah i i I didn't study for, for many, many years before I started with um, the, my previous university. And um, I think it was just a case of saying, I want to do it. I just, I just you know, I, it was, it, it was a, a confidence builder for me. Um, I had to do it for myself to prove that I could do it. I knew I could do it. But I had nothing on paper that said I could. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just kind of took the plunge and just jumped and hoped for the best. And as it turned out, it was great. When I then went, had a, a very big gap again of, oh gosh, it must have been 11 years. Um, again, I was kind of, mm, you know, I'm getting on a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can I actually do this? Um and like I said before, you know, talking with Sean, she really, really put my mind at rest. So I would say speak to student support, um, be honest about what what part of it is actually scary, because you're not going to be the only one. You know, you're really not going to be the only one that's that's got these thoughts. And I think sometimes when you just hear it broken down by a different person, you can kind of put yourself in that position and think okay well actually I could do this to to combat that I could you know I could do a to to sort out my problem b and it, it's just finding ways to do it um I'm very much a person if somebody tells me I can't do something <laughs> I will do it <laughs> yeah I will do it absolutely and I'll do it in style <laughs> um which was probably quite frustrating for my parents but you know now um that's what I teach my daughter um you know and it's fantastic my my two older children are both at universities you know and and to go through it all again with with the little one I mean you know it, it's manic and it's madness and trying to run family life is very difficult sometimes um, but it's just worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Brilliant. Thank you. Laura. Just to super quickly add to that as well. If people are worried about going back into study um, because they feel like they're a little bit out of practice, um, that's what the academic support tutors are there for. So they run all of those free sessions for you to get back into the habit of academic writing or referencing and all of those really, really important skills that will help you succeed in your studies. Um, so there is all of that support there that's absolutely free that you can take advantage of um, while you, you're studying with us and getting back into the swing of things as well. That's amazing. Um, thank you. And, and thank you, Laura. I think I can just um, open a couple of questions out to the team now um, with just about five minutes or so to go. So would also encourage anybody that's, that's out there has got a burning question that they want to ask and haven't, hasn't done it yet, please pop it in the chat. Um, but there's a couple of more kind of practical ones here now. So can I find a student satisfaction information on your site? I'll jump in with that one. Um, yeah, we have got some key statistics and things like that on the website. Um, they're not in sort of a specific place, but you can have a scroll through and you can hear from um, what our students say about each individual course on the course pages. Um, I'll pop a link in the chat as well, actually, um, that's got a load of case studies and testimonials from some of our students. So yeah. There's a real mix of ages and backgrounds and um, nationalities on there that would be really good for you to have a read through um, just just to hear what they have to say about their experience. So I'll, I'll dig that link out and pop it into the chat now as well. Wonderful. Perfect. Um, right then. Uh, OK, so I suppose you oh, well, I don't suppose you have answered this, um, but maybe not directly. I'll ask the direct question now. What is the difference between Arden University and the Open University? Mm 
Shall I answer that from a student standpoint? Yeah, because I, I kind of put two and two together there that you've done a previous online course some time ago. So, <laughs> so I, I thought, right, OK. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so for me personally, the um, I enjoyed my courses with Open. I, um, I did well and, you know, I had a great time with that. The key difference for me personally was the support. Um, while I would get feedback on my studies and things like that, the actual well-being side of it, the um, the direction that I would be given or offered or anything like that was uh, almost non-existent. I mean, uh, for me personally, um, I, I've done three courses with Open University, so you know I, I'm fully aware of how they work. Um, and while I had a great time doing it. Um, for me personally, in my situation now, being a mum, having, you know, a family life, having a, a disability and an illness that affects me all different types of ways, um, I, I, without a doubt, would, would choose Arden mainly because of, of the support. Brilliant. Thanks, Laura. Um, and I think there's just one uh, question that's quite specific that's just kind of flown in at the end. Not sure who's going to be best placed to um, answer this. It's, do I need an IELTS test as I've been here in the UK for six years, but my high school certificate is from overseas? Um, yeah, I'll be able to answer that question. So, um, so we do have uh, English requirements for our programmes if English isn't your first language. Um, we don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be an IELTS test. We do accept different tests as well. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be sort of done on a case by case basis. I mean, usually, if English isn't your first language and you haven't studied, um, you know, sort of a, a high level qualification, maybe sort of degree level or high school level in English recently, more than likely we would need to prove your level of English through a test, but it doesn't necessarily need to be an IELTS test. Um, there are plenty of different English tests that we do accept that can be sat from home. Um, so it's something, you know, if you do go on to inquire or apply for a specific programme, it would be something to talk through there with your uh, student recruitment advisor because they'd be able to advise on that for your specific situation. Brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, right then, guys, um, we're coming up to the hour, so um, it's brilliant timing. Um, there's been loads of questions asked and, and brilliant answers as well. So I'd like to thank um, all of the team here at Arden who've put this, together this amazing presentation and, and answers everything so comprehensively. Um, and if, to everybody still here, you know, there's still you know nearly 400 people here listening to all of this information. So um, I'm, you know, hopeful that you've found it extremely interesting and beneficial obviously all of the contact details for Arden are here now there's been some links that have been put into the chat for specific information that has been kind of alluded to and asked for within the, the chat but I think I'm just going to hand over to the team just for a kind of a final um goodbye and a parting statement if that's okay with you guys yeah of course thank you so much for having us along um and to everybody that's attended the session today uh, we hope you found it useful and that you've been able to take something helpful away um and again those those contact details are there and we keep sort of banging on about the word support i'm sure you've heard it so many times today um but that really is what we pride ourselves on um so please do get in touch with us and reach out to us with absolutely any questions at all and um you might get to speak to one of us um or another member of the team and we'd be more than happy to to help you um and we we'd all like to wish you lots of luck um in in your future endeavors and, and wherever you end up and and hope that you possibly consider Arden to to help you on that journey wonderful Thank you, Molly. Well, I think that's my cue to, to say goodbye and to wrap up the session. Again, thank you, everybody, to the team. Thank you, Sam, saying thank you on the chat. Thank you, everybody who's here and has kind of come along for the ride. Um, I've been Heather. I'm from Career Map. I'll say goodbye now. And, um, and yeah, thank you for a great session, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.